This luxury car buyer is the kind of person that is a connoisseur of fine things. Independent researcher, consultant, and sales specialist, Gert Sutton, is well known to many Cadillac personnel for the highly productive seminar programs he's held in a number of Cadillac dealerships nationwide. Mr. Sutton's extensive knowledge of retail automotive operations is due to first-hand experience, four years in sales and several years in dealership management, in addition to in-depth experience in Cadillac markets, products, and customers. Because Gart Sutton offers such uniquely valuable expertise, we've asked him to share his knowledge with all of us. Well, this is your first time seeing this car, this brand new Cadillac front wheel drive. And let me go around the room real quickly and ask you, what do you think? What's your first impression, Tom? I like it. I like the clean look, and I think it's going to do extremely well. Good. Uh, Bill, what do you think? I'm excited about it, Gary. It's a, it's a beautiful style, a new design, and I like the features on the car. I'm excited about it. I think it'll be good for us. Is your customer going to be excited? He's going to be excited, too, when he sees this car. Great. It's good to hear. Yes. Still got the class. It really makes you feel like you're driving a Cadillac. It really makes you feel like you're somebody. It's it, nice. Is it going to sell? You, excellent. Definitely good. will. What do you think? I'm impressed with the overall beauty. I know it's going to sell. I'm very impressed with it. And I'm impressed, too. In fact, I'm excited. We've got an all-new Cadillac. And this new Cadillac is not only going to be able to hold and maintain that traditional Cadillac market that we have, but also it's going to be able to expand and be able to reach a wider marketplace. We're going to get more foreign car buyers in to look at this car. We're going to have more women interested in the car, and even that younger market. So I'm excited about some of the things we'll be doing with this new automobile. But you know something? When Cadillacs provide this car for us, we as salespeople have got to change. We've got to look at our market and look how we make our approach to this new market. Cadillac's also done some marketing studies that uh, tell us a lot about that luxury car buyer. One thing it tells us, though, is that we need to break the golden rule. Now, the golden rule that we all know is do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Well, to reach this new market, we've got to not do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, but do unto others as they want to be done unto. Let me show you what I mean. Luxury car buyers have different types of attitudes. And the way we find their attitude is, first of all, look at their characteristics. You probably can relate very well that you have some customers that come in that, have, that are highly responsive. They're warm, they're friendly, they're easy to warm up to. And there's others that are low responsive. These are kind of cold, they're distant, they're not bad people, but difficult to get close to. Mixed with these two characteristics are characteristics of buyers that are highly assertive, liking to control you and the situation, and others that are low assertive, not wanting to make waves. Well, if you take these characteristics, you can build quadrants so that we can examine this new car buyer or this new market. We can look at the car and analyze the buyer and figure out how to put the two together. Let's take our first attitude type which is a highly responsive person, highly assertive. That's the best is best type. This luxury car buyer is the kind of person that is a connoisseur of fine things. Fine cars, fine wine, etc. This is the person that likes to consider themselves somewhat sophisticated. In fact, let's look a little closer to, at this person. Highly responsive person, highly assertive. A person that wants the most sophisticated, the best available. That's the appeal that turns them on. A person that wants a car that gratifies their ego and makes a personal statement to themselves and to their friends. This luxury car buyer wants high quality and good performance. And interesting that the marketing studies show that this person is younger, 25% single, and they like imports. Well, how do we relate to this person? Well, being that they're highly responsive, we should warm up to this individual. Because they have a high ego, we should feed that ego. The second attitude type would be what's called style is best. This is a person that's a highly responsive, warm and friendly person, much like that buyer that's the best is best. 
But unlike that best is best person, it's a low assertive person. This individual doesn't want to make waves. They want friendship and trust and to develop a relationship with you. You see, some of the things or aspects about this style's best is that they're looking for a car of their dreams, something that's going to really turn them on. Buying a car is an emotional decision. They go for the aesthetic appeal. How this car looks is very important to them. Thank goodness we've got a car that will appeal to them that's got the sophisticated design and the aerodynamics that the new Cadillac has. They also want the Cadillac prestige. They seek a prestige nameplate image and appearance of luxury lifestyling. They want glamour, they want quality, they want something that's stylish with an efficient design. And interesting enough, these marketing studies pointed out that the styling is best person is motivated to buy now and pay more, which is good for us. They get emotionally involved, they get excited about the automobile, and they've got to have it now. Now, our third attitude type is what's called engineering is best. This is a low assertive person, just like the styling is best. They're low assertive in that they won't make waves. If they don't like what you say, they'll just leave and that's all you'll hear from them. They won't come into a confrontation. They're low responsive in that they're more data oriented than people oriented. They're not real warm. Kind of difficult to get close to. Something about this engineering is best is interesting. They appreciate such features as the full instrumentation, the rack and pinion steering, a firm ride, and a road car handling. That typical engineering type. If you look at this person, you know that they desire to know everything mechanically. In fact, their friends come to them for advice on how to buy a car or how to, uh, to uh, maintain a car. They're highly educated, engineer or science type. They're mostly males, they're car enthusiasts, and they're import buyers. How do we relate to them? Data, specifics. We've got to know our product knowledge. We've got to be able to have that product knowledge and give that to them and substantiate it by showing them those facts in the literature. Now our last attitude type is a person that is low responsive in that they're difficult to get close to. They're not real warm and friendly. They're also highly assertive where they like to be in control of you and the situation. We put these two characteristics together and we come up with a big is best attitude type. This obviously has been our traditional buyer. They want the big is best. That's not all that they want. They want size at all cost. Six passenger big car with boulevard ride and handling appeal. They like that smooth ride. Well, we're not gonna lose that person with this traditional car. That traditional customer will still like this car because of some of the roominess inside of the car. The features that we have that we can present to this biggest best individual. They want comfort, luxury, and convenient they trade in frequently, they have strong brand commitment and loyalty to both you and to the product. They're older, they're the highest average income, usually the entrepreneur type or the retired type, and they're anti-import, totally American, flag-waving, they love American cars and American products. Well, here it is, those are the four different types of attitudes. You're probably saying you have some customers that are a little bit of both. Well, that's precisely correct, that some people can have a little bit of both. But one thing we need to do is identify what is the dominant attitude type, and then approach this customer and relate to them as they want to be related to. Or as we said earlier, do unto others as they want to be done unto. Well, we're going to have a quick role play and go through some of these attitude types. We'll discuss more in depth of how we as salespeople can relate to them and sell them. One thing I'd like to have you keep in mind, though, is that we've got to be in tune to that customer's mental radio station. That's called WIIFM. What's in it for me? That's what that customer is asking. And we need to relate to them 
and show them the benefits of the features that this car has to present. Let's take a look and do a quick role play. This is a dramatization of a slightly exaggerated best is best character. Now let's suppose I've had a chance to sell myself and quite frankly it took over an hour to do that. Now, determining needs is not the hard part with this individual. As we said earlier, he's a highly responsive person. He likes to talk. Oh, he made me very aware of the restaurants that he patronizes and the wine that he drinks. He's got a big ego, and at times I found it even conflicting with mine. But we talked about it earlier that I've got a choice here. I can either feed my ego or feed my family. And in this case, I'm choosing to feed his ego. I can feed his ego by talking about benefits that he can relate to about dwelling on those appeals that we spoke about earlier. He wants the most sophisticated, the best available. He wants a car that will gratify his ego and make a personal statement of who he is. He also wants good performance and high quality. Unfortunately, this car will offer that. Now let's pick it up where we left off. In the role play, I've already sold myself, I've determined his needs, and now it's time to present the product. Another example of the quality of this automobile can be found in the luster of the paint. You know, this car was taken through eight stages of a phosphate dip and even some other rust-proofing processes. Then it was dipped into a primer and finally the color base was applied. Now this color base is a high solid enamel and that should be enough and impressive in itself. But Cadillac didn't stop there. On top of that color-based paint, they put two coats of clear enamel, and that's what gives it its real luster. It also gives to you as a customer the benefit of a strikingly attractive automobile that's tough and that's durable. The exciting thing is that every coat is applied automatically. It's computer-controlled. It's designed to provide consistently high quality. It's got a world-class finish. And what does that mean to you as the customer? Well, that means it's comparable to the best of imported luxury cars. Maybe so, but uh, this paint's not better than Mercedes. I certainly can understand how you might come to that conclusion. And you'll probably be interested in knowing that many Mercedes customers have compared their finish to this. And what they've found is that side by side, they really can't say that the Mercedes is superior. Put simply, this car represents not only Cadillac's best effort to date, but it also clearly sets a trend for future luxury automobiles. You know, I'm sure with your appreciation of fine automobiles, do you already know that this HT4100 V8 is transversely mounted? You know, this is the only transversely mounted V8 engine offered in a production automobile anywhere in the world. It's teamed with a new four-speed automatic transmission. Another state-of-the-art design. And this power team delivers high operating reliability, that excellent fuel economy, and some good performance. Well, a lot of my friends who drive foreign luxury cars say that they get better performance than Cadillac. Gosh, I can understand how you feel. And performance is important. We've had many foreign car buyers come in and look at this car. And they've found that if you take that 4100 engine and you put it with a new four-speed automatic overdrive transmission, it's a real winning combination. In fact, the performance is unbelievable. In fact, that performance is one of a kind. You know, higher levels of quality have also been built into these interiors. Let me show you what I mean. We've had numerous discriminating buyers, such as yourself, who've looked at this car. And the more that they look at it, the more impressed they are. What is more impressive about this Cadillac than other luxury cars? There's an all-new feature that's offered only by Cadillac. That's the body computer module, one of the most sophisticated features offered on any car today. In fact, with the BCM, as we call it, the electronic climate control can actually anticipate temperature changes within the passenger compartment before they occur. Now, the benefit to you is that there's much more consistent temperature with much more consistent comfort. Now, that's something impressive. Tell me, do you enjoy music? Good sound reproduction. Sure do. I've got over a thousand recordings in my collection. Then you've just got to hear this sound. I think you'll find it as good or better than the system in your own home, which I'm sure is one of the finest. 
This car is equipped with the available Delco GM Bose premium sound system. This system is the ultimate in luxury car sound experience. Go ahead and turn it on. That's truly amazing. I've never heard anything in a car sound system like this before. There's never been a car like this Cadillac before, with its comfort, its convenience, its driving pleasures, as well as its total luxury car experience is unmatched by any car produced today. You know, this role play has touched on only a few of the bestest best features suitable for this attitude type. But the key element here is that we build value and that we do unto others as they want to be done unto. It also stands to reason that our next attitude type that we do the same thing, build that value. And our next type would be styling is best. Styling is best are people that want the car of their dreams. They respond to the car emotionally. The exterior beauty, the luxury appointments, the stylish trim. However, because it's such a visual experience, Cadillac has also made a very aesthetic engine. Notice the black and silver graphics, the neat and orderly wiring harnesses and conduits. And Cadillac's attention to detail even went to accenting color-coded fluid identification systems. You know the engine aesthetics may not appeal to every stylist's best customer. But we must remember that the overall visual appeal is important. We must create the car of my dreams and take advantage of this person's motivation to buy now and pay more. Well, let's continue with our next quadrant, our next attitude type. Let's talk about the engineering is best. In fact, we said earlier that the engineering is best is mechanically inclined, a real car enthusiast. Someone who's highly educated, an, an engineer type or maybe even a scientist. The kind of person that uh, drives a Peugeot or maybe a Saab. We probably could have guessed that this was the analytical type when you saw the pipe. And let's go ahead with a slightly exaggerated dramatization and see how well we do in relating to this type of individual's benefits. I know you continue to make the HT4100 DFI engine standard, but this is a new diesel, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. And this is the new 4.3 liter V6 diesel. You owning a diesel foreign car could certainly appreciate some of the features of this new Cadillac. It's got the fast glow plugs with a weight to start of only six seconds at zero degrees Fahrenheit. And an intake water separation system, which can prevent damage by contaminants. And to you as a customer, that can mean less repair expenses. You know, instead of three belts, this car has a new single accessory belt. And it's got a self-adjusting tension control that will increase your belt and accessory life, which could save you money. Only one battery with the diesel? Why is that? Well, that's because this is the Freedom 3 battery. It has a thinner cell plates and more of them. It'll increase your cold cranking amps from 770 to 1075, which would make two batteries totally unnecessary. Yes, I see. And I noticed there are two electric engine cooling fans, like the gasoline engine. As I understand it, those fans are computer controlled. Now, how is that possible with a diesel engine that doesn't have an electronic control module? Well, that's a very good question. And the answer is that this diesel does have a new body computer module that controls the fans. It's a Cadillac exclusive feature that's standard on both engines. You know that body computer module that we've been talking about, or BCM as we like to call it? That controls other operations too, such as the electronic climate control. Now, that electronic climate control will give you to the degree accuracy and will actually anticipate temperature changes within the compartment before they happen. Is this BCM just a simpler version of the ECM? The BCM includes complete onboard diagnostics. It monitors the system, detects malfunctions, and even memorizes them. It was designed to save you time and servicing dollars. Now, let's take a look at Cadillac's new instrumentation. 
As a car enthusiast, you can certainly appreciate the cockpit arrangement that is driver-oriented. And the speedometer doesn't even have a cable anymore. It works by electrical signals from a speed sensor. A brand new feature is the diesel data center that provides the weight to start indicator and a water and fuel warning. Notice how conveniently it's positioned on the instrumentation panel. Tell me, speaking personally, how would you evaluate the suspension on these cars? Quite frankly, I would say the ride is impressive. It's flat even on the curves and the steering is quick and it's responsive. Yes, I've noticed that you've got four-wheel independent suspension and rack and pinion steering now. That's correct, and we've got plyo cells in the front McPherson strut, which maintains consistent performance under all conditions. You know, this is a new kind of Cadillac. So let's take it for a quick drive, and let me show you what I really mean. Remember that this technical information applies to the engineering as best and does not appeal to that traditional Cadillac buyer. Our job as salespeople is to identify and adapt to different attitude types. So now let's talk about that big as best. The exciting thing that Cadillac has done in this new car is to preserve those traditional values. That crisp looks, the smooth and quiet ride, the spacious interior roominess, and most importantly, that full six-passenger luxury car comfort. If we continue to sell the features and benefits that will turn that biggest, best customer on, we'll be successful in marketing this car. But if all else fails, we still have that rear-wheel drive Fleetwood Brougham. You see, we've got the best of all worlds. Well, what do you think? Is this realistic, Tom? Yes, very much so. I think uh, it shows that the car fits all types of buyers and that uh, with the new product, we can sell just about anybody, but we're going to have to know our product, and with that, we'll know our buyers better. That's good. Yeah. What do you say? Well, I think it certainly made me more aware of the different types of customers that we do run into, and it's uh, it reminded me also that we certainly need to be sharp on our product knowledge. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, anytime you can get to know the customer a little bit better, it's good. Uh, it gives us a better sales tool. We can work with them better and get out there in the market. So this will help you in selling this new car. Oh, definitely. Dave, how do you feel? Well, I feel identifying the uh, types that are going to be coming in will help me get a larger share of the market. Uh, the resized car, I think, is the car of the future, and this program has helped me to uh, understand what I have to do to get my share of the market. That's very true. You know, there is a broader market. And what we try to do here is to identify the people that are in that market. We talked about the attitude types. What we're talking about here is identifying that buyer out there, adapting to them. We've got a new car, and there's a new world out there. Lots more prospects. It's up to us now to do the best that we can to sharpen our skills.